On Motorcycle Experience, we kickstart our 17th ultimate ride by celebrating Canada's 150th. Setting course for the largest freshwater lake island in the world, we'll ride through some amazing fall scenery and explore some tasty roads. During a red adventure with a couple of friends, Tony Sharpless tells us her GPS is programmed for fun. And speaking of shifting gears, riding instructor Jen Martin is shopping for a new set of wheels this week. While over in the garage at Originator Custom Cycles, builder Rob Chappelle dives into a brand new build. All this and more on Motorcycle Experience. Hello and welcome to Motorcycle Experience, the voice of motorcyclists everywhere. I'm Dave Hatch and this week we're kicking off a brand new season of Motorcycle Experience. And to do that, we're going to take you up to Manitoulin Island with this year's Ultimate Ride. Plus, we've got the Red Adventure, shifting gears with Jen Martin, and we're starting a brand new project build-off bike with Yamaha Motor Canada. But before we get to all that, let's check out this week's road test. What's that you say? You love leader-powered hyper sport bikes? Why back in the day you cut your teeth riding and hanging about with friends who had Jixers? The 600s, the 750s, maybe even the Mighty Thou? But what's the deal? You say these days you want just a little more all day comfort. A slightly softer saddle perhaps. Maybe a bit more of an upright riding position. Heck, it's not that you're getting old. I mean, after all, you still love the mid-range punch of a fuel-injected dual throttle valve in line four with slightly milder cams breathing out through a four into two into one pipe. Not to mention that you just can't live without trick electronics, such as a three level traction control system, plus a fully adjustable inverted fork and four piston Brembo monoblocks with ABS are still very high up on your must have list. Is that too much to ask? Well, apparently not, because Suzuki's all new GSX S1000F just might be the answer to all your big bore sport bike needs. But you don't have to take my word for it. Just ask this week's guest rider, Jeff K. Jeff, it's pretty hard to start a conversation about this motorcycle without talking about the engine. Yes. O-M-G. Yeah. Um, uh, Suzuki says it's a detuned version of, uh, you know, their monster 1000 uh, CC. But, you know, Detune is a relative thing. This yeah. this thing absolutely screams. Uh, red line of I think 11.5, and um, it it just it just wants to go. It just screams to go. I love the sound. Yeah, it sounds I don't fantastic. Know if you heard me blipping the throttle. Yeah. And yeah. The sound is just addictive. Yeah, I had to I had to test the uh, I had to do an auditory test at about uh, seven o'clock on the 401, uh, quite loud. And there's some there's uh, some sort of a device inside the uh, the muffler uh, that that changes the the configuration that just makes it sound better. But it's 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 just a joy to listen to. It's just a really fun fun motor. The, sh the gearing I've found very close. Uh, this is a six-speed transmission. You know, for a touring bike, the most would view that if you're over the age of 40, a six-speed transmission is undignified. You know, five-speed is, is plenty. You know, with the torque that this thing has, you could have actually had a five-speed transmission. You know, yeah. six is is great, yeah. uh, great for the track, right? You know, shifting and upshifting and downshifting, but uh, but close gear ratios I found. Big honk and Brembo brakes. Yep. Lots right. of stopping power. Fantastic, yep. Good feel. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And it has, uh, f I think, f three or four different settings for traction control. Right. So if you're out as we were, and, and there's some gravel around, and you, you get on it, I, try, I tried it to see how it worked, because I'd never had an experience with traction control before. Um, it just, you know, it's you, you, you hit it, the wheel starts to spin, and it just bleh, yep. you know, uh, takes the power out of the engine. They're quite handy. If you want a lot, if it's rainy or slick, you know, you can have that, or I had it on setting two, which was just a little bit, but it's, an, it's neat. And then, of course, you've got the, uh, the ABS braking. Certainly, uh, it's got a great, beefy set of suspension bits, um, all adjustable, nice yeah. carving corners. Yeah, absolutely. It, it feels very, very stable in the corners. I haven't had a chance to really hang it over. It's a loner, so I'm not going to, you know, do anything crazy, but it, it feels extremely comfortable. I mean, look at the size of that back wheel, and the, there's a lot of rubber there. So yep. it's, it's, it's a very comfortable bike. But, you know, seat's fairly low. I mean, we're six feet tall. 
Um, the steering lock to lock is uh, you can you can get around in a, in a pretty tight turning radius. So it's you know if you have to turn on a country road, uh, you can you can make that turn without having to you know three point it. So great bike. I did find it a little cramped in the leg department. What did you uh, think of the, the riding position? Um, I was happy with it. I, I, I like having my feet underneath, or right underneath my, my hips, so that was fine. Um, I found that there wasn't a whole lot of wind protection. So when you're out on the highway, yeah. you are taking the wind. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 you either like it or you don't. But the, the, the pegs, not too bad. I, I, was, I was fine with that. What do you think of the, uh, the build quality, the fit, the finish, the paint? It's gorgeous. That's a beautiful red. Um, you know, the, the, it, it's, you know, the black and red is a beautiful combination. It's got the, the flow. It, it's a really pretty bike and, you know, from all different angles. It's, uh, it's, it's a head turner, actually. I mean, I was riding it in the city and people were, people were doing double takes at it. Hmm. Could have been me. Yeah. <laughs> you were wearing a helmet, Jeff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, who's this bike? designed for? I think this bike is for the sport bike rider who uh, is thinking of, you know, transitioning into more of a, a, a touring mode or, uh, you know, someone who doesn't want their mom to know that they've got a sport bike so they can say, no, it's a, it's a sport touring bike. Yeah. But it's, it, it's in that, it kind of fits in that gap between a, a pure sport bike, um, you know, like an R6 or something like that. Uh, although this would this thing would be a blast on a track, um, but the, the the riding position in the handlebars gives you that little extra comfort so that you can do the, the distance stuff. So it's I think it's a stretch to call it a sport touring bike, but it's uh, it, it's definitely um, uh, more versatile than a than a straight up uh, uh, sport touring track style bike. What's the uh, what's the one outstanding memorable? What's the what's the one lasting impression? The performance, the the, the performance uh, of of the motor. You know, you roll it on and it just goes. It really, t I the, one of the first adjectives that, that uh, when I started riding it was tight. Everything's tight. You know, the the handling is tight. I mean that in a good sense, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, the, the throttle response is tight. The brakes, everything, everything is very track like. You mm -hmm. know. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's, that's enormously appealing in my view. Well, thanks for coming down to the county today. Always a pleasure, beautiful day. Thanks for riding this beautiful bike down to the beautiful Prince yeah, Edward County. It was county. a real chore. <laughs> yeah? No, it was fun, always fun. Great, great okay. job. Thanks, Jeff. Pleasure. Hang in there, we've got plenty more experience still ahead. Next, Tony Sharpless hits the road with a little help from her friends while Norm Wells and I kick off our own truly Canadian adventure, eh? Portions of Motorcycle Experience are brought to you in part by Honda Canada, Suzuki Canada, and BMW Motorrad. Welcome back to Motorcycle Experience. I'm Dave Hatch, and it's time now to kickstart this season's ultimate ride. I believe our 17th, as Norm and I get set to celebrate Canada's 150th from the saddle of a motorcycle. Okay, so quick recap. Each fall, Norm Wells of BMW Motorrad and myself have loaded up our motorcycles and set off to explore a new riding destination somewhere in Canada. Over the past 16 years, I'm proud to say that we've ridden pretty much coast to coast here in Canada. We've ridden east, as far as you can in this country, until you hit the rocky lip of the North Atlantic Ocean off Cape Spear, Newfoundland. While 7,700 clicks to the west, we've crossed Vancouver Island and dipped our wheels in the sandy Pacific in Tofino, BC. So for this year's ultimate ride, Norm and I thought it was high time we explored the Yukon, one of the most scenic parts of Canada, which totally explains how last fall we wound up in the parking lot at BMW Motorrad Canada, prepping for a ride to explore the largest freshwater lake island in the world. So Norma, I'm a little confused. Uh, it's eight o'clock uh, on day one of our uh, 17th ultimate ride. Last year, we were supposed to ride to Manitoulin Island and we wound up somehow in Las Vegas playing blackjack. This year, we were supposed to go to Whitehorse and instead we're in the parking lot getting set to go to Manitoulin. I am so confused. What happened? Well, you know, plans change and, and uh, that happened to us now two years in a row, but 
these are things that can happen to anybody, so it's always good to have an alternative plan to what your original one right. was, and then fortunately this one works out well because we'd already planned it, as you said. So yeah. now we can just do it in reverse because right. we were going to be going the other way, So uh, and taking it a little bit more eastern uh, Ontario. Well, what I love about this trip that we're, we're about to embark on is um, we're shooting in the fall, uh, getting set for another broadcast season next spring. Next year will be the 150th anniversary of Canada. And I just feel like this route, uh, if, we, if we hit our marks, we're just uh, sort of walking in the footsteps of Samuel de Champlain. We're, we're going to hit some iconic Canadian places like, uh, well, Bob Cajun for one. Yeah. Um, we're going to follow the Ottawa River, which, you know, Champlain used as a, as a highway back in the day. Um, and I think we're going to just see some real good old fashioned Canadiana really celebrate the 150th. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, and while doing that, we're also going to enjoy some very good roads. Because mm -hmm. as we leave here today, uh, on our route to Pembroke, we're going to be, we'll probably touch on a couple of the 500 series, but this eastern part of Ontario here has some really wonderful roads. And the 500 series roads are so much fun to ride. Yeah. And in, in, as you said, the fall colors and, and traffic should be light. We're uh, October now, so yep. that should be a beautiful ride today. I'm hoping we'll have the roads to ourselves. Uh, the leaves will just be changing color. As you said, it's early October. And, and this five series highway, there, so much has been written about these highways. Uh, you've ridden them a lot with the with the BMW crew. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We've uh, we've actually ridden them down to Calabogie, so going a little bit more southeast than what we're going to be doing today. But again, there's still 500 roads everywhere. But they're twisty, they're fun, they're forested. Uh, it's just it's just me a really good fun riding day. Yeah. Now, ha have you ever done this route before? Have you followed the Ottawa River? Uh, a, little, a little bit of it, not not as far south as or east as where we're going to be going from. I was more up like in the North Bay area, mm -hmm. um, which we're going to be doing backwards, as you said, from what the original plan was. But uh, I've done some of it. Again, it's you know it's just another beautiful ride along the river and forested on the on the sides of, of the of the highway, and, and uh, just a real fun, smooth ride. Yeah, originally we were going to do this clockwise, but we're going to circle Algonquin Park counterclockwise, and uh, there you go, another iconic provincial park, Algonquin Park. Um, so we can talk about the group of seven at some That's point, exactly. I'm sure. This is going to be great. I'm so excited. Uh, cloudy. Do we put on the rain suit? What do you think? I don't think so. It's just going to be a little bit misty and uh, it's going to clear up for us. And we've got four days of sunshine according to the liars. So we should be good to go. Awesome. So day one, shoot one. Bob Cajun is next. I am so excited. Let's go. Let's hit it. Next week, be sure to tune in as Norm and I will continue riding northeast towards Pembroke, Ontario, in search of the iconic Canadian beaver tail. Now, let's catch up with Tony Sharpless and her friends Mike and Michelle Bell in Tyrone, Ontario. Tony, what a beautiful morning. It's a gorgeous fall day, and we're just out for a day ride. You've brought along a couple of your friends, which is very cool. Um, but this has been great. We're in Tyrone, Ontario. And uh, you said you picked this map, uh, you picked this route and mapped this route entirely using a, a GPS. Yeah, I, well, as you said, I brought my friends Mike and Michelle Bell along with me, but I also brought my little friend Tom Tom as well. Yeah. It's a fantastic new little gadget that I have. And I've never used a GPS before, but this thing is so easy to use. Yeah. And uh, the neat thing about it, Dave, is that today I, you can actually plan a thrill ride. So it's one of the options that you can choose when you're planning your route with the with the TomTom Tom GPS. Very cool. So other than just saying I want to get from A to B and, and letting it take you there, it gives you an option of picking twistier routes? Totally, totally. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so it, you know, you can do windy or you can plan a thrill ride. Right. So it, it gives you the option to whatever you want to tailor your ride to, right. which is really cool. And it also gives you uh, real-time traffic too. Right. So if there's any congestion or backup on a route, then it will give you an option. Right. So it's, uh, I just live by it now. I'm still old school. I still like the map. You know, I like to have a backup and I like to sort of see what's around me. Um, you're okay with that or do you bring a map as well? Well, my backup is my phone. Mm -hmm. It's my lifeline. And I like to put my phone in a nice safe pocket, something that's waterproof and uh, keep it safe. Yeah. And uh, that's my backup. And my backup, backup to keep my phone going, I always carry a little uh, power pack. 
And with everybody's gadgets and electronic gadgets now, this is a really great idea. Mm -hmm. This is just a little sport version from Any Gravity. Right. And it can uh, charge up my phone in just a couple of hours. Yeah. And uh, any of the gadgets that I carry. I just carry this with me all the time. I've got one in my car and always carry one with me on the bike. Right. So. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Well, so far it's been a really fantastic ride. And uh, has your TomTom -tom figured out where we're going next? Yes. Yes? Yeah, okay. so we're all set. All right, this is great. Well, let's, uh, let's get back to our ride. And uh, thanks very much for some great advice. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Tony. Up next, shopping for a new motorcycle with Jen Martin. Plus, we'll kickstart this season's Yamaha project bike with a teardown. Welcome back to Motorcycle Experience. I'm Dave Hatch, and it's time now to kickstart a new project build-off bike with the folks of Yamaha Motor Canada. Now, you may recall a couple of seasons ago, we tackled a bolt with Rob Egan from Brooklyn Cycle Racing, and that project was so successful that this year, Yamaha came back to us and said, what do you think we can do with an FZ07? Cue Matt Fillion of Yamaha Motor Canada. A few months ago, Matt decided that he wanted to see what could happen if you handed the keys to an ultra-modern looking twin-cylinder FZ07 to a custom bike builder and said, hey, street scramblers and flat trackers are really cool and very popular right now. See what you can do with this. And with that, Rob Chappelle, owner of Originator Custom Cycles, snapped up those keys and said, stand back and watch me go. So Rob, uh, we're here in your garage and uh, you've been hammering away at this project for uh, just roughly a month part time. I'm sitting here looking at the stock bike, the FZ07, and, uh, and I just already I can kind of see where you're going right. with this. Futuristic, street fighter, very uh, sharp edged, lots of angles, and already I don't know what you've done, but <laughs> just in stripping the bike I can see Everything is softer, rounder, more organic. Would that be a yeah, good description? Yeah, for sure. That's great. It's kind of where we're headed with it. Uh, the idea with the, the angles, angles of that stock bike was to try and you know, make it more classic, more of a, a standard kind of street tracker bike. You know, mm -hmm. Once we took all the plastics off, we kind of looked at the frame and thought, that's a great basis for a, for a build. So, right. yeah, that's kind of where we are. So just show me quickly, like, what have you t taken off, first of all? Like, obviously, the headlight's gone. So show yeah. us the stock headlight. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. So the stock light really kind of looks <laughs> aliens. like aliens. Yeah, aliens, you know, kind of big ears on it. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got that kind of futuristic look. Yeah. Uh, the tank was very much the same. It was one of those things when we got it, we weren't quite sure how the tank would work, but it was all plastic on top of this peanut tank underneath. So that so is the stock piece that's, that's under the plastic? Yeah, that's all you're looking at. So it's kind of a fake gas tank, so to speak. Yeah. We've got the tail section. Yeah, that was the big fender. So if you kind of hold that up under here, mm -hmm. you know, you get an idea. It was actually out about that far. Right. <laughs> so by, you know, getting rid of that, we make the bike look a lot shorter as well, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, is, is what we're, the look we're going for. Okay. So uh, the intention here is to, uh, looking at those bars, we're going for a, like a street tracker, a flat tracker yeah, kind of look, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Kind of like a, a city scrambler tracker, if you will. Well, this is a great start, and I can see already uh, you've swapped out that front fork because there's the stalker right there. So yeah. when we come back next week, let's talk about the challenges with the front end. Sure. Uh, what you may have had to do with the suspension in the rear. The tires look different. The bars are different. So you're well on your way. Absolutely, yeah. Next week, let's come back and start talking about that part. Cool. Sounds project. good. Very cool. Good. Okay then, now that we've got you pretty much all fired up for another season of riding, stay tuned because next on Shifting Gears, Jen Martin has some great advice on shopping for a new motorcycle. Stay with us. Portions of Motorcycle Experience are brought to you in part by Honda Canada, Suzuki Canada, and BMW Motorrad. Welcome back to Motorcycle Experience. I'm Dave Hatch and we'll wrap up our show now by highlighting what to look for when you go shopping for a new motorcycle. 
Joining us now is professional motorcycle instructor, Jen Martin. You know, Jen, all this season we've been shooting your shifting gear segments at Suzuki Canada, and I thought I just spied this room as I was going to the washroom, <laughs> uh, that uh, I just saw all these bikes and I thought there are just so many different bikes now in terms of riding styles, sport bikes, standards, adventure bikes, cruisers. You know, how do you help new riders at the, at the school? How do you help them decide what kind of motorcycle to buy? Well, I mean, so many things come into play when you're selecting a motorcycle for you. It's, uh, first and foremost, it would be the fit, mm -hmm. you know. For me, I'm tall. Pretty much, I could sit on anything, and it would I can I can ride different levels, uh, height levels, right? So, what am I using it for? That's right. that's one of the things. So you've got like the standard motorcycle, yep. like the SV, and then right next to it, you got the Boulevard. They yeah. are designed to do two completely different things, right? Yeah. So are you going to do a lot of touring? Are you using the motorcycle for just commuting to and from work? Mm -hmm. would, city versus rural riding. Right. Um, so a lot of things come into play with your selection in that aspect, for sure. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the GSX uh, just behind you here, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, passenger, are you going to take a passenger? Yeah, and certainly that's a factor as well, because so, some motorcycles lend themselves better to carrying passengers than others. Uh, CC size. Mm-hmm. You know, displacement. Displacement. You know, if you're thinking about a, a beginner rider, you know, do you need to step right up to the... Oh, I don't know. Which one would you select as the first bike? Uh, well, I'm a big fan of the SV650. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Great all rounder, balanced motorcycle. But I'm also looking at uh, the, the, the dual sport bike over here, the, the DR400, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking luggage. What if you want to take a, a trip and you want to bring along some luggage? You also have to consider how, are you, how long are you going to ride this bike for on a trip? Yeah, so in seat comfort wise and, and um, longevity of, of the ride, like if you're going long distance for sure, you want to make sure that you are comfortable. So really when it comes to purchasing a motorcycle and if it's, especially if it's your first motorcycle, it, a bit of a checklist. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to use this motorcycle for, how much displacement do I think I need, um, how tall of a motorcycle will it fit me? Mm -hmm. Sounds to me like I need to get to the dealer. Yeah, you got to sit on them. You got to mm -hmm. sit on them, try different styles, uh, and, and make sure it's the one for you. Right. Lots to consider. And if it's not, maybe you get two. Or three. Four. Or five. Five. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Well, that's it for this week's program, folks. We're all in time, but before we go, I just want to remind you, mark your calendars right now, Friday, June 9th, Picton, Ontario. Be there for our first annual Motorcycle Experience Film Festival. Three classic films, micro-brews, wine, food truck, prizes, giveaways. You won't want to miss it. Plus, September 23rd, it's our fourth annual Wings Over the County event, again in Prince Edward County at the Hillier Creek Estate Winery. So, go to our website, www.motorcycleexperience.ca check it all out we'll see you next week keep your feet on the pegs and your right hand cranked bye for now <laughs>